Yo, Elliot, I was raised Lutheran by my father, but he doesn't go to church anymore. I was going to a Catholic church with one of my buddies, and it was very different, but I liked it. I was a member of my Lutheran church and got confirmed there. I was wondering if I should keep going to my Lutheran church, uh, even though I haven't been there in some years, or keep going with my friend and work on becoming Catholic. So this is a great question, and there's a lot that I'd like to share with you. Number one of which is that it would be important, it's incumbent upon you to do some research into the history of the church. And when I use that term, the church, I'm talking of all Christian history, right? From, you know, the, 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 the apostolic fathers up through today. And what you're going to discover, and I'm going to give you some resources, is the history of the first church, right? Which was the Catholic church that had a great schism that broke off into the Orthodox and to the Catholic church. The Orthodox and Catholic are very similar, but different. And then uh, in the year, I want to say uh, 1500, was that when Martin Luther, yeah, 1500, Martin Luther came about, he was a Catholic monk, he was, uh, and he was, a, he was a part of the Catholic establishment. He broke off, and then there was a third break. So there's literally three huge schisms, three original schisms of the Catholic Church, or of the, the Church, right? I say Catholic because I still sense it as the, as the OG Church, as the Catholic Church, right? O, them and the Orthodox. I kind of see them together. It's like the OG Church kind of split, and then there was a final, then there was another split. So you got to look at, you, what I would encourage you to do is number one, there's a, this is how I started to understand and make distinctions between denominations in the church. I started studying church history. I didn't understand anything about all the different denominations. All I knew was that I was baptized Catholic. And a part of the reason why I remain Catholic today is because I was Catholic, right? In a way, I didn't even choose it. It chose me, right? And is that a good thing or not? Well, I don't know, but I do know that I open my mind to all of it so that I have perspective about what's going on. And none of it, all of it, let me put it this way, all of it has its drawbacks. There's a YouTube channel I encourage you to go look at and study, and that is called, it's, it's called Ryan Reeves. And Ryan Reeves is a seminary professor who teaches historical theology for everyone. He calls it One Gospel Through the Centuries. I'm looking at his YouTube channel right now. I remember when I was f f becoming Christian again, I went back and I watched every single one of his videos starting from like seven years ago, right? And it, it, give, it gave me perspective on how we got to where we are right now where there's so many different denominations. And also recognizing the, the huge split that happened when Martin Luther, the founder of Lutherism, came and made his split from the church. I don't want to give you my opinion. I want to point you in the direction of resources. So dive into Ryan Reeves' theological history on YouTube. The guy enlightened me to so much. He hasn't made videos in a very long time, but he doesn't need to because the history is the history, right? And he starts right at the beginning, right? So... Watch those videos so that you understand mainly what Protestantism is, because that's when that's really where he starts in a way. Like he's, let me put it this way. I don't want to say that's where he starts, but that's where he shines, is post Martin Luther and everything that happened post post Martin Luther. And then you know there's Calvin and so on and so forth. Um, study that, and then also. I would encourage you to start another YouTube channel called the, um, the Meaning of Catholic. The Meaning of Catholic. And this guy goes into the history and the important non... The history about the Catholic Church that we didn't hear. Post-Enlightenment education uh, has, a, has, a, has a negative view of the Catholic Church. And I've discovered that not everything that we've been taught about the Catholic Church is actually true, meaning in all of its negative stuff. There's negative stuff in all of them. There's negative stuff in the Catholic Church. There's negative stuff in the Orthodox Church. There's negative stuff. The, the Protestant Church is so confused that you go, you can walk into a Protestant Church and, and it's just like even it's like a supermarket front uh, 
there's a supermarket front and like it, it, they could be doing all kinds of weird shit like there's no there's no more tradition there's no more boundaries it's whatever you want it to be right so there's there's a lot there's a lot that you can dive into and get confused but you want to be able to have this this helicopter view of the past 2000 years ad adenum the year of the lord adenum diem is that it adenum diem Adenum diem, something like that. Annual, right? Adenum, I think from the word means year, A. And diem, I think God, it means God. The year of the Lord. We live in the year of the Lord, right? Everything AD is the year of the Lord. So you're wanting to study all of history from, it's from the year of the Lord, right? From zero, right? First century. First century fathers of the church, right? These are, these are the OG originators of the church and that's why i love reading like the desert fathers and i i really really enjoy reading the apostolic fathers and like the early 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 church in fact it was because i started studying the early 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 church that i was converted because i started reading a lot of books like the philokalia right these were like these were like the sayings of the early church fathers not the bible right which the bible's great one of the problems with protestantism is that they only believe the bible it's like the bible is is the word and that's it where traditionally there's tradition and with tradition there are teachings that are not written in the bible that early christians understood and passed on right there's a treasure trove of uh, uh of tradition as well as uh what they call the deposit of faith that's only found in the tradition in the traditional in the traditional um, churches, right? The Orthodox and the and the Catholic, and that's why I like the Orthodox and Catholic because they retain this, the early, the traditions of the early church. You walk into a Catholic church or you walk into an Orthodox church, you're walk you're stepping back in time. Especially if you go to a traditional Catholic church. The Catholic churches today, the Novo Ordo's Catholic churches, they're just like Protestant churches. There is no better except you get the sacraments, which is great. You need the sacraments. I'm a fan of tradition. I'm a fan of the old style, um, not just the architecture, but also the old rituals and rites and, and, and sacraments that are only available in the old traditional church. I love old, the old traditions. I like the traditions. I don't know what to tell you. I like the fact that there are sacraments in the Catholic church. Right. And, it, and when you go to a traditional tra Latin mass, you're participating in a mass as it's been practiced for over 2000 years. Tradition or call to tradition. I love tradition. And so I want to be a part of something traditional. Why? Because tradition has history. Tradition has has. Uh, it has the. The, the weight of history behind it, right? It has the, the, the millions that have been through it and have done it right from the beginning, right? So I lean towards traditional things. You just see the way I've been in my life these past few years. I'm all for traditional family, traditional marriage, tradition, tradition, tradition. And so religion, traditional Catholic. I like traditional Catholic. I like Orthodox. I like traditional Orthodox Catholic. When we get to Martin Luther, we start getting into what? Protesting. So there's when and then when we protest, this is where if you pay attention to progressives, liberal progressives are nothing but protesters. They protest against everything that's traditional. So much so that, you know, just look at where we are today, where like traditionally someone with a penis is a man. But progress is so rebellious that it says, no, we won't even honor that. You have a penis. You could be a woman. Right. Birthing people is a term that they use. I believe that our progressive, liberal, Marxist world that we live in began with Martin Luther. He was the first to say, fuck this, I ain't doing this traditional stuff no more, right? He had his reasons, probably some good reasons, but at the same time, he went and perverted, he created his own perverted version of what he thinks is, you know, like better than tradition, right? I don't think anything's better than tradition, just my opinion. So... And I'm talking a lot, I'm speaking in, different, in a lot of circles, and I'm also giving you my opinion, but you need to look for yourself. Uh, so from two perspectives, Ryan Reeves, you're going uh, to get a lot of Protestant perspective. Learn a lot about Luther. Learn a lot about Luther through Ryan Reeves. And then the meaning of Catholic, you're going to learn about the history of the West, which leads me to two more books. The, the history of the West is Christendom. Catholic Church is the history of the church, the history of the West. And you'll know this by reading two books. 
There's one book, very enlightening book. I didn't know this stuff because the Marxist school system hates tradition. And if you hate tradition, and Marxists also hate God, you want to destroy the traditional religions of, you know, the, 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 the civilization you're seeking to destroy or overturn or to progress into, right? So there's a book uh, titled How the Catholic Church Built Western Civilization. It will blow your mind in terms of how many things we've been told that were completely wrong about the Catholic Church. In fact, like things like uh, Copernicus and Galileo and how they were persecuted by the church because they, because they had a, a, a heliocentric model of the world and how you know the Catholic Church was so backwards and wrong that they, that they denigrated these people. That story has been so misrepresented at least that according to this book that I read, that no one ever reminds you that these guys were funded by the Catholic Church. These weren't like independent scientists. These were theologians. These were guys that were in the church, working through the church, using the church's resources. And a part of the reason why there was a little bit of, cont there was some contention, not to the degree that we're talking about right now, is because there was, there was uh, character disagreements personal disagreements in fact the great schism between the catholic church and the, uh, and the orthodox church was mainly due to personal preferences between a couple of guys that just didn't like each other right had nothing to do with truth it had nothing to do with with uh you know getting down to the bottom line or, or who's better than who it's like just there were some petty people that had some petty arguments that reverberated out through the ages to now where christians are completely uh separated so much schism Read this book. Read this book. How the Catholic Church was built. How the Catholic Church built Western civilization by Thomas E. Woods Jr. Ph.D. It'll enlighten you. It'll open my open my eyes up, right? Because when I found when I became Christian again, I didn't want to go through the whole denominational thing because I think it's silly. I was like, why are Christians so separated? And I thought to myself, it was revealed to me that hey, Elliot, you're Catholic, and I made no bones about it. I didn't say, oh. Uh, maybe let me be something else. I said, oh, let me find out what that means. Let me find out what that means. So you go to the Meaning of Catholic YouTube channel. Those guys are awesome. Say what's up. If you go there and you watch any videos with uh, Kennedy Hall, he's such a beast. He's a cool dude. Big beard, traditional Catholic man. Young guy too. I did an interview with him on his show not too long ago. But uh, he, you, you'll really enjoy his take on history. So just, I'm not trying to convert anybody. That's really not my opinion. That's not my purpose at all. I'm not trying to convert anybody to anything, but I like to point you to where I get my ideas from and why I have my certain opinions, right? And then you can make up your own decision, right? Um, I'm not like the Jehovah's Witnesses, right? Like they want to save everybody, right? Or even like evangelicals, they want to save everybody. I'm not trying to save everybody. I have a big mouth. If you hear what I say and you take my opinion and it works out for you, great. If you don't want to hear it, well, what am I going to do? I ain't trying to save you, right? Can't save everybody. Um, and then there's a, a second book called The Politically Incorrect Guide to, the, to Catholicism. And on the cover, it has a picture of a bunch of nuns with rifles. <laughs> it's pretty badass. So I just want to point you in the direction so that you can make some decisions based on what you come across and then you can settle into where you're, you're most comfortable, right? Like, am I a bad Catholic because I'm not trying to make you Catholic? Maybe, right? But what I want is you to exercise your free will and that means learn for yourself, really study the history, see what happens, find out who Martin Luther really was. Martin Luther, well, it, it took Protestants as a hero, but Martin Luther was he hated his father he had like mental problems he had an unresourceful attachment to his mommy he was not a perfect guy not that even like the pope is a perfect guy the pope right now i think is is ruled by satan i think we got a fake pope just like we got a fake president right now i think we got a fake pope i don't think the pope the catholic pope i don't think he's christian <laughs> but that's just my opinion looking at these people and their character who they claim to be and what they actually do right Bottom line, I, I guess, right, and this is kind of what I'm coming to, right, is I don't think it really matters what denomination you're a part of, right? I know that, that doesn't sound so good to some people, but I think the bottom line is your relationship to Christ. And there are certain churches that make it such that you have a better relationship with Christ. If you go to a church that, that, that has the sacraments, right, like the Catholic Church and the Orthodox Church, they have sacraments that bring us closer to Christ like the Eucharist. Right. 
Protestant churches, a lot of them don't believe in the Eucharist at all. They don't believe in the body and blood of Christ. They don't believe in... They, there are the sacraments of reconciliation. There's a re sacrament of uh, matrimony. There's a sacrament. Uh, there's so many different sacraments that, that, that baptism, right, was created by the Catholic Church. John the Baptist created, created baptism, right? These are all av available to you. And so, in my opinion, I come closer to Christ through the Catholic Church. Catholic Church has a lot of guardrails. Let me put it this way. I'm a guy who resists guardrails because I know I need it so much. The Catholic Church has a ton of guardrails that keep you on track. In the Catholic Church, there's something called the state of grace. And the state of grace isn't just given. It's something that you work on every day and you maintain. You try to stay in a state of grace. Of course, the grace of God is because of the grace of God that we have an opportunity to come into a life through Christ. But I don't think that means we can get away with whatever we want, do whatever we want, and live like degenerate, live, live like the world lives. And there's a lot in the church that mirrors the world. Instead of allowing the world to mirror the church, the church is mirroring the world. And so it's a relationship with Christ that matters most, but go to where that relationship can be best fostered. I have a friend who's Pentecostal. They do bioenergetics, basically. Pentecostals, they catch the Holy Spirit, and they're like, they're shouting. There's charismatic movement in the Catholic Church. They're like shouting and breathing and hooping and hollering and passing out with the Lord and people, are, all that, right? There was a time when I, you know, I was like doing grounding camps and stuff. I was like, wow, Pentecostal Church looks a lot like grounding camp, right? Because if, if that's where you need to get fed, that's where you get fed. Get fed through, those are people that get fed by the emotion. Those are get fed, people get fed spiritually, you know what I mean, uh, uh, um, emotionally. You can also be fed spiritually with, with deep contemplation. And there, there are, uh, I don't want to say sex, but there are parts of the OG Orthodox Church and Catholic Church that is that revolves all around developing the spiritual life, right? This is where you get monks. These are people, they're ascetics, right? They're ascetics. I got, I became very, uh, uh, very, very fascinated with asceticism when I started fasting. In fact, fasting was what brought me back into the church also. I started fasting and I started reading uh, the works of the early fathers, mostly the Orthodox. I still read an Orthodox Bible and, um, and reading the desert, the desert fathers and how these guys were ascetics and their spiritual path was through asceticism right um stoicism asceticism and stoicism go hand in hand right so it's really where you want to receive although lutheran and some of the methodists like some of the you know offshoot churches still retain a lot of the sacraments i think lutherans still receive sacraments right um although you know it's a little different to me, I think that's, I would, I would prefer that, right? I mean, I would say if I had to rank it in order, I'd say Catholic, Orthodox. Luther, he didn't stray too far. He strayed far, but he didn't stray too far because he retained a lot of the sacraments. And you go to a Lutheran church and, and they almost are like Catholic in a lot of their rituals. But by the time you get to the Anglican church in England, all rituals were thrown out the window. They threw the baby out with the bathwater. They were like, we had to get as far away from Catholicism as possible, so no more tradition at all. No more sacrifice, sac uh, sacraments at all. No treasure trove of deposit of faith. So much so that all they believe, all certain denominations, some denominations, all they believe is whatever the Bible says. And the Bible is the end all be all. Right? But there's a lot more to it. There's a lot more to it. And I think it's I think it's it's our duty and it's incumbent upon us and it's our gift to look back through the centuries and learn how this all started, where we came from, how we lost our way, how we got to where we are today, and of course what's being revealed for our future. And I don't think you can go wrong, man. I don't think you can go wrong if you have that relationship with God, God the Father and His Son Christ. So there you go, bro. That's my opinion on that. I wish you the best, dude. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students, where, among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. 
That sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.